This is where everybody keeps their power supplies, at the back of a desk, leaving room to work here at the front. But what happens when you actually use it? Well, I'd imagine your desks aren't intentionally set up like this, to make a whimsical and engaging intro. Anyways, when you connect the wires, or even worse, have them permanently connected, and then attach the clips to your project, do you see a problem here? The wires go absolutely everywhere, go over everything that you're working on, and just get in the way. If only there was a way to connect these leads right here at the front. In fact, why not have multiple ports so you can extract power from anywhere, from any of the corners here? While we're at it, why not just make a power supply completely invisible? Oh shit. My electronics area is a little bit crammed, there's simply not enough room to do anything big and my equipment needs its own space too. Since the addition of a microscope, my soldering station is even quite annoying to use, and my oscilloscope is even worse. I plan to incorporate an adjustable power supply under this desk. One like this will do just fine, and probably have several tasteful connectors spread all around the corners for convenient use. There should probably be one of those low profile banana plugs, but I'll have to think about that later. Then I would also like some USB ports. With my current setup, I technically only have two USB ports within a reasonable distance, and these two are on the power supply itself. So that means when the power supply is off, there's also no power on these ports. It'd also be nice to have some wireless charging. It would charge at a pretty slow speed, but it's still charging nonetheless. There should also be an AC power distribution bar at the back. I'm going to use it to connect all of my tools and also plug in the desk here too. I'll need to shorten the wire for the desk here, but rewiring a plug isn't too difficult. So I've got to try to implement all of these features to this desk, while also keeping everything clean, tasteful, and as invisible as I can make it. So as mentioned before, I have an oscilloscope soldering station, all of which have a similar problem to the wires going everywhere. Although I use my oscilloscope fairly often, I feel like it would be quite difficult to build it into the desk so that it's clean and the signal quality is not affected. The soldering station could definitely be incorporated into the desk too. Its functionality is very simple and very similar to a power supply, having only a rotary encoder input a fairly basic display and a few outputs. I'll add it to the list here too, but I'm not sure if I'm actually going to add it. Right, so I've got to consider a power supply. I could use an AC to DC converter with another buck converter, but there's probably no overcurrent protection. It's probably going to be quite hard to make adjustments and who knows if it's even safe. At the end of the day, I just want something that works. I could also just buy an off-the-shelf power supply and more or less glue it to the underside of a desk and connect its outputs to the connectors on the table. This would be a little bit lazy and I think it looks quite bad. However, a bad idea would be to buy an off-the-shelf power supply, gut it and put it all in a low-profile case, so it's just pressed up against the table and it's quite hard to see from the outside. Now for the display, I could connect it to a voltmeter, which would be quite easy, but the display won't be too accurate. Whenever you turn on the power supply and you want 5 volts, the display might only show like 4.98, although this would be technically more accurate, but it won't be very nice, as the numbers will never be quite even, they'll probably go up and down depending on load, especially as the wires do have some resistance and therefore have a bit of a voltage drop. I could also remove the LED display from a power supply and just mount it to the desk. This will be a little bit more difficult, the numbers would be quite nice. But who knows, these 7 segment displays could be connected to a big circuit board which is also connected to all sorts of electronics as well as rotor encoders. I think the best option here, which is slightly more annoying and takes a bit more effort, is to desolder all of the 7 segment displays and have a custom circuit board with my own 7 segment displays. I'm not quite sure if these are common cathode or common anode, which means there's either one ground pin or one 5 volt pin. But this is far more customizable, and I can rearrange these 7 second displays however I want, and also just use different coloured ones and different sized ones. Right, for the outputs, I can kind of do two things. I can have metal banana plugs, which are large, match, but there's also no green available. I could also use the low profile plastic ones, which are small, coloured, but they're a bit cheap looking. And it can't accept those C fork type connectors. I think in the spirit of making this power supply as invisible as possible, I think I'll have to stick with the smaller ones. I then purchased the power supply, connectors, wires, and everything that I would need at this stage of a project. At this moment, I didn't order or design any circuit boards, or even start designing an enclosure for the underside of a desk, as I didn't quite know what was inside that power supply. I'd have to disassemble it and take a look first. Before we get started, I'd like to point out the desk itself. This is the E7 Pro from FlexiSpot. Now, I've had my eyes set on FlexiSpot for a few years now, but I've never really committed to buying one of their desks. As someone who spends several hours of a day sitting at my desk, having the option to stand is invaluable for proper blood circulation in the legs, improves posture, and it even boosts productivity as energy levels are boosted, which I didn't actually know. If you're tired from standing, the desk can be lowered very easily, and you can continue working uninterrupted. This desk is also incredibly sturdy, and pretty much rock solid when placed on a hard floor. Of course, I've got carpet here, so take these 
wobble tests with a grain of salt. Also, it's actually a lot quieter than I thought too. I thought these motors would be quite loud, but surprisingly they're really quiet. Keep in mind that this desk isn't also just limited to computer use. It can be an electronics workstation, like the one I'm designing now, a place to do art, or even a dinner table, especially with their larger models. These legs are also removable and can be used with your own desktop. Although this table is able to move up and down, the FlexiSpot have prioritised load capacity. It can support 200 kilos or 440 pounds when static and 160 kilos when moving. This is way more than enough for several monitors, a PC and even a whole person. The E7 Pro's height ranges from about 0.64 meters to nearly double at 1.29 meters. This desk also places its legs towards the back, which they call a semi-C structure. This lets you have an extra little bit of leg room, which is great for spinning chairs. Check out FlexiSpot for their E7 Pro, as well as their other models which offer better prices or even better performance. Finally, the E7 Pro offers 30 days of risk-free returning and also a 15-year warranty, which is insane. FlexiSpot currently has a sale going on for almost all of their standing desks, which can be combined with a further $30 off by using the promo code YTE730. Check the first link in the description for FlexiSpot's E7 Pro. So this desk also comes with a cable managing tray, but I won't be installing that yet, and also a little silicone cable managing clip. Now that I had the desk, I could start planning what I actually wanted to do. I made a quick CAD model infusion just to map out what space I had available, and the power supply arrived about a week later. So this is the power supply here, it's just arrived, so let's take a look at it. So it's in quite a low profile case already, but I think it can be slimmed down a lot more. This feels really lightweight, so I'd assume the circuit board is only really flat and at the bottom here. So I've also just noticed this fan here, so I think we're going to have to take that off and somehow mount it to the bottom. These are just Phillips screws, so they're really easy to take apart. So with my power supply that I already had, I've noticed that the fan here doesn't actually run all the time. It actually turns on and off depending on load and probably depends on the temperature inside. So this probably isn't just connected to 5 volts on ground. So most likely I'll just have to use a fan that's already here and just mount it in a different place. Yeah, so if you look here, there's actually a really big PCB with everything on here connected. So you've got the LED displays, you've got the connectors, you've got all the knobs, dials, buttons. If the seven segment displays were connected on their own board, I could have just taken that board off and mounted it to this desk somewhere at the front. So I thought this switch here would just be connected to a GPIO with a microcontroller. Um, so I didn't expect there to be any current going through this, but this actually connects the AC here. Um, I'm not sure if my switch will be able to handle that much current, um, but we'll see. <laughs> I, guess, I guess we'll have to find out. Oh, I actually forgot to do one thing. Okay, that didn't come off too well. I thought that was going to be a nice, satisfying peel, but... Oh well. So I think what I'll have to do is take this board that's mounted at a 90 degree angle, put it flat, I can't really stretch it out that well, but I have to probably put it flat with this board, and that way I'll be optimizing space. I pretty much have as much space as I want, like in the flat woods direction, but I don't really have much vertical space, but we'll see how that goes. Also, there's going to be all sorts of dangerous electronics in there, so um, this would need its own case as well. And that will probably have to be a low profile 3D printed case that's kind of pushed up to the bottom of the table. So I've been poking around the display here and I can't really determine whether these seven segment displays are common cathode or common anode. Um, I found this chip here at the front. I'm yet to look up the code on here, but I assume both the positive and negative ends of LEDs are all connected to this. So I don't think these are actually connected directly to 5 volts or directly to ground with any of the pins. Um, I could be wrong, but that's what it's seeming like to me, or maybe I just don't know how to use a multimeter. But none of these pins here are showing continuity with ground or any of the 5 volt lines, like maybe there could be a separate 5 volt line just for the displays, but... So I think what I should do next is just look up the chip number of this little IC here, and that should probably tell me what type of 7 segment display is used in here. Right, so I found this is the TM1640, and these displays are actually common anode. So yeah, I was kind of right. The ship doesn't just source a sink, but it kind of does both. It has pins for grid and pins called segment, and these connect to both positive and negative sides of LEDs. So I may have actually preemptively designed and ordered the circuit boards already for seven segment displays, and I've um, connected all the commons together. So just in case these LEDs were a common cathode or common anode, um, all the commons have a jumper cable connecting that pin from either being 5 volts or ground. But the commons are still all connected together, so 
I'll have to find a way of salvaging the psychobots. So now I've got to measure all the important dimensions and put it into CAD. After measuring the circuit board and parts, I modelled the hold off of electronics and added in some channels for the wiring, as well as some holes for the connectors in the display. In hindsight, I should have reverse engineered how a little display chip works. Um, that way, I don't need to connect 146 wires for the displays. Turns out, this chip is also incredibly simple. Also, I've got to sort out the thing where all the commons are connected, and I don't know how I'm going to do that. You know what, since I kind of screwed up these boards, I might as well just use regular 7 segment displays and make a 3D printed mount. Well, I guess it's time to grab my piece of crap 20 pound router and go at this thing. So while I'm infuriating the woodworking side of YouTube, I'd like to point out that my channel now has memberships. Apart from certain sponsored things, everything for these projects is bought with my own money. If you'd like to see some behind the scenes and support the channel, please consider throwing a couple bucks at your screen. Here, bro boy, gotta pay for the put up, you don't get no paper. Creole, no, I got the flavor. Wanna be me, sound so basic. Pull up the size, I'ma take that. Money find me, I don't taste that. I'm doing me, why is you mad? Black boy in a two tone, do that. You see me? Oh shit, that's bad. I tried to glue down this little piece of chipped wood, but it didn't really work too well. Since the underside of the desk was only cosmetic, I figured it would be best to stop chiseling. The underside would look terrible, but at least the top side won't get damaged even more. If this damage ends up being too noticeable, I could re-veneer the top surface again. If you guys don't have a label printer, consider getting one. They're so cheap and make cable organizing so much easier. Oh yeah, and don't forget about zip ties. So I'm disassembling the soldering station. It looks like one of these connectors is completely burnt up. So this trace connects to this pad, and this pad is connected to earth through this yellow wire back here. But it looks like this trace has been completely peeled off. I'm not sure what's going on, this thing has been working fine for quite a while. I've also noticed that this connector doesn't actually have a thermal output. It's got two pins for AC and one pin for Earth, but no actual thermal reading for an NTC. So these temperature readings are completely wrong then. Ah, that's interesting. Alright, so this is the desk here. We have a display here which is 3D printed and designed to match the FlexiSpot display. They don't look identical, well nowhere near, but this one doesn't look too out of place either. And yep, I didn't embed the display into the desk. Up here are some unlabeled dials and buttons. I know what all of them do, but it would be a good idea to have some text somewhere. Maybe with laser engraving, but this desk is a little bit too big to fit in the laser cutter that I have access to. Let me know what I should do about this in the comments below, I have genuinely no clue. Down underneath is a bit of a mess, and don't look too closely, nobody needs to know about the war crimes committed down here. 
Okay, fine though. As a quick overview, instead of flowing AC through this dinky little switch, it's wired up to this solid state relay. The encoders, buttons and lights are all connected through this massive single coloured wire. But the current carrying cable is quite thick here. These connectors are glued down so they'll never move, and the earth connectors have tabs underneath to attach crocodile clips or ESD straps or something like that in case I ever need it. As a last minute decision, I have also added a switch here to the wireless charging area because there's a goddamn LED that would not turn off. Now, to address some issues. I looked at designing a power delivery USB board, but it looks unbelievably complicated to implement and design yourself. That may as well be a whole video in and of itself. The best I can do is double-sided tape the charger to the bottom of a desk and call it a day. The wireless charger is also there if you need it to. Also, the electronics here are completely exposed, which is obviously a very bad idea. After uploading the video, my first priority would be to 3D print a cover of sorts. Overall though, it works great, and I think the display looks pretty cool. It's not everybody's cup of tea, but I quite like this big hunk of numbers. Oh, and what will I do about this crack?